Whether you've been in Spain for six months or six years, don't miss Payathair and Aredia in conversation with Moody on Bay Radio every other Wednesday at 10 a.m. Payathair and Aredia are your international lawyers on the Costa Blanca and have been looking after the expat community for more than a decade. See more at alicantilawyers.es. Wednesday morning then, and uh, doing my... Uh duties as doorman as well here. Ignacio was there, waiting to come in and chat to us from Payeth Air and Aredia. Good morning, welcome back. Morning, how are you today? Doing fine, thank you. Yes, yeah, good to see you. I'm, I'm in uh, adult clothes now, and now it's got a bit cooler. Back, yes. Back in long trousers, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it needs to be a bit more formal with this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but So it's just yourself today, because uh, Pedro is in court. Yes. As I suppose happens yes. a lot. Yes. <laughs> and that, that takes priority over coming and chatting on the radio, I guess. <laughs> That's correct. Actually, it, it is impossible to cancel, you know. Mm. You, you get these appointments, uh, and then you need to go, obviously. Yeah. Uh, it's not like going to the notary that probably you might even get around a possible date, but with a court is a fix, and unless somebody's ill, uh, you have to go. I give way to that any time, yes, of course. Um, so well, what's it like? I mean, we Brits will be used to um, the way their courts work, and a lot of them very old buildings, and it's you know very, they still wear the, the robes and the, the wigs and stuff, but in Spain it's a little bit more sort of a modern setting, isn't it? It's, it's kind of a bit more clinical and office-like. Uh, what do you mean? Do you, have you seen, you've seen uh, some of the old British stuff, like you wouldn't know Rumpole of the Bailey, but the, the very old courtrooms. Um, oh, yes, and it's, but, you yes, know, they, they yes. wear, they wear yes, the, the, uh, the judges, yeah, judges yeah. wear the... Uh, yeah, the he is a bit more more than I agree. Yeah, yeah I mean, there know. are there are the, the, the lower courts that uh, there are like that in, in, in the UK, but uh, there's still, you know, the if high If you go level. to high court here mm. as well, you will see it different. You know, it's a bit more mm. traditional and, and uh, you know, you, you've got not only one judge you've got three judges uh one secretary and then a clerk mm. and and then the lawyers the public prosecutor yeah and then you get the whole the whole scenario and it's public i mean anyone i mean not because of the pandemic now moody but people are allowed to go and watch any trial every day i mean now obviously because of restrictions is not allowed uh but i think that's going to be going back to normal that's that's how I feel, yeah. you know. Is is, um, and and I used to probably if you're queuing, the problem you have is when you have a hearing like Pedro today, he's got an appointment nine thirty, but uh, well, it's likely nine thirty. They might be kind of like punctual or kind of like on time, you mm. know. But it's not normal practice because they might start nine o'clock. And they give half an hour, let's say, per trial. Or, or it depends on how complex is the, the hearing, you know? Right, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, and there, therefore, you, it overlaps, and, and then it starts queuing, and the backlog, you know, is on, on the hearing. And yeah. the other day, I went to Murcia, to, to theatre, and I had an appointment. It was cancelled four times for different reasons. It was a criminal case. And, um, and we had the appointment at 12 o'clock. Oh, sorry, 11 o'clock. And um, they were late, uh, for one hour, so obviously that that's pretty much nothing for us, you no, know. Right. Queuing, unfortunately, yeah. we we yeah. used to wait. Uh, it took us one hour, and then you margin uh, my my court hearing was my case was very very difficult, very very big case, yeah, yeah, a complicated, a complicated yeah. thing with a lot of witnesses, cross examinations, and things like that, and translations. One was British, the other one was Dutch, ah. different translators, public prosecutor, etc. And uh, I did leave the room at three really and yeah. i was just the one for 11 so i was seeing oh. my other colleagues uh, watching me saying is uh, when i got in they said is it going to be long i said well i think an hour might take wow uh, but it was three hours you know did you have to walk past them on the way out <laughs> yeah so giving you the giving you the skunk <laughs> yeah, i didn't look at them though <laughs> tapping their watch <laughs> Come on now. but i i told the clerk you see and and they they just put their diary, Woody. They just well. The thing is, it's not black and white. It's never going to be no. on time, is it? Because there's all sorts of things come up. Yeah. Um, so something like that, you can never sort yeah. of legislate for it. No. I, and actually, this hearing I had, I I, I did tell the clerk there was going to be a difficult one. Mm. So they they shouldn't put more appointments after hours. No. Well, you told them. Yeah, you did your. Yeah, bit. I told them, you know, and it was <laughs> the third time they cancelled because once I go all the way to Murcia. Uh, and, and now the translator is not there. Okay, it was their mistake. Next time it was uh, the the car broke, you know, uh, and this was the third time already with the hearing, mm. and and it had to happen. It was already three years past the the event, you know. It was it was a fight with with between people, you know, elderly people, 
and and the Dutch people right away. Uh, and unfortunately, okay, yeah, yeah. the lady just, well, because of the fight, fell. And uh, obviously had the post-traumatic um, mm. illness, yeah, you yeah. know, from and, and it was a long case. And, and, and we were asking for more damages because at the end of the day, how do you prove all that fight? What cause, you see? How do you prove um, that all the illness came because it's only um, neuro, you know? Sure. But also, it's so it's so far, you know, so many years later that uh, yeah. you get even it yeah. gets even more difficult to prove, I suppose. Things and like actually, that. the the sentence still didn't come through, and that was the seventh of October. We are today twenty seventh. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and right. it's likely I wouldn't expect a sentence to come more after one month. I will give mm. minimum. It is extraordinary though how how long these cases take to. I mean, obviously the you know defence and mm. prosecution are putting their cases together. But uh, that that fellow from Podemos that um, got the, yes. uh, found guilty of kicking yes. a police officer yes. that was in 2014. Yeah, I like know. Seven years ago. Yeah, um, the, the thing is, uh, unfortunately, uh, the process starts, takes time, and there is a lot of obstacles. For example, in my case, we need to go to the forensic scientist. Uh-huh. And then you go, well, you need to have an appointment, you know, and, and by the time the court realised that you need that, then it's been sent to the city, in this case, it was the city of Morphia. Um, and then, uh, and the problem that happened, Moody, in in this case, was that the lady it was so in shock because uh, post traumatic uh, shock um, because of the fight um, that she couldn't even uh, speak in front of the judge. So when no. we just opened up the hearing, uh, she will start like mumbling or, or just not even able to say a word, and and the judge and the public prosecutor got saw each other and I said, I told you I, I didn't want to suspend that because mm. because she's not well. So you could imagine this sort of trial. Um, and then you have another obstacle. You need to have a, a cross-examination. They need to be here. The other ones had to float, um, fly from, from the Netherlands. And um, I was representing the yeah. elderly couple. So. Yeah. So, so I could tell you so many stories no, uh, sure, uh, yeah. and, uh, on the whole thing. Yeah. And... Um, and that was because on this fight, they did one denuncia, the other one does the other denuncia, and then the, the whole administration of justice starts slowly mm. and depends on the uh, what area you're in. For example, here in Javier will be always Denia. Right. Um, yeah. But I've got all sorts of stories for every single mm. one. So, sure. uh, And of course, the, the last 18 months or so, things have been held up anyway. With, yes, uh, yes. You know. Cases, extra, uh, extra problems. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned, um, obviously, you mentioned Dutch people there. And how much of your work is with like, expats, if you expats. like, or, you know, other Europeans and yeah, international? Yeah, I, I could just probably, um, I will say minimum, uh, our work for international clients will be, I could say, 75%. Well, really? Yeah, yeah, much, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or 80%. Because there are a lot of nationalities and, uh, and all the... We, we we deal with Spanish uh, clients, but obviously uh, we've got that extra value uh, knowing international law or Spanish uh, clients with international issues. You mm-hmm. know? Um, and obviously where we have more values for this expat community, where we fully understand um, all their legal situation and fiscal situation, you know. Uh, but yes, I will give that average on international clients. Right. I hadn't thought of that because it's not just a case of you speaking the language or being able to get the translators. You need to know sometimes the laws of their, their countries. Their countries, right? yes. Yeah. Actually, we have a court case now, uh, and, and Petra is dealing, uh, is dealing with that case, um, is about the applicable law. Mm. So she's Russian. Uh, she started a case, again, the beneficiaries. Oh, it's contesting wills, basically. Uh, you're getting these because what law is applicable? That's why it's so important to make sure that the will mentions the applicable law. Um, but it doesn't really prevent from a beneficiary contesting the will. So in this case, this Ru- Russian uh, client uh, appeal the, the will mm. saying that, um, that the applicable law was Russian. Um, and it was understood uh, the other way around. Uh, it was Spanish. And it was Russian. So it's, it's a fight. One says it's Russian, one says that. Right. So, and you need a lot of evidence. Um, so it's, it's very important, Muddy, to know uh, the process here in Spain, but to be able to use all the international ingredients 
mm. for this case. Sure. And, and, and that's pretty much our speciality with international. And how different is Russian law to Spanish law? I get the idea that it might be a little bit. Yeah, it is, it's a little bit, but uh, I was quite surprised that they still have as well have interstate laws um, as we do. And uh, it's, what I've been uh, seeing, Muri, is different countries, different percentages. Hmm. For example, in the, in the UK, you will have as well percentages if you don't have a will. Right. Have, was it called have interstate law? Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, that's what happened with, with in Russia, whether it goes all that for the wife or it goes for the children, you know. And I'm dealing with another court case here as well. Um, about um, they did accept the inheritance, but uh, our client is 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 saying that it was not correct. He, he didn't have the correct information at the time. So okay. uh, you know these sort of things that you 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 deal. It was the wife and the children. Uh, well, one son. Um, they went to the notary, not with us. They just uh, went with the same uh, representative. They signed, and now. Uh, he found out there was more information missing. Okay. And now he's about contesting the will. Mm. So, um, especially on the inheritance, Muddy, is very important to uh, the, the whole thing is what law is applicable, what forum you are suing, because um, it could be very complex. Uh, you could be in the UK, I would, where do I sue him? I sue him in the UK, I sue him in the United States. Uh, you know, that's a, one of the most important questions we make when we open up a case is where do you sue somebody, jurisdiction, right. yeah, and what is applicable law, mm -hmm. and then after that is a case, yeah. But is a long, it, it could be very long. I mean, a lot of ingredients with international things. That's why I always say the the better you leave everything tied up the better for, for beneficiaries. Yes, uh, planning and planning. all of that. Now, if we're bringing it back to Brits, just very quickly, I know we've mentioned uh, the wills before. Um, so a Spanish resident, but, you know, British national, as it were, um, you, can, you, have, you can have both wills, can you? You have an English and a Spanish one. Yes, Is that right? you, you could have one for, the, for your home country, for, mm -hmm. for, for Great Britain. Um, you could have, and then you mentioned in the will, Muddy, that all these, all these assets are for the UK. You could have one in Spain to say this is for Spain, or you could even do one here or over there, an international will, which depending on the case, how complex it is, we are saying a lot. Uh, for example, let's say you have a few bank accounts in the UK and, and most of your assets are here in Spain. Well, probably, and you never made a will in, in the UK. Well, my recommendation then will be do an international will that covers worldwide assets. Hmm. Why? Because at least you've got a formal document where, in cases needed, you could provide it to the banks if they are being difficult, etc., etc. Now, if you have a lot of properties, a lot of issues over there, uh, and complex things to deal with, I recommend to keep it separate um, to make things easy. Sure. N nothing else at the end of the day. And, um, and another good tip of advice I will give um, the people is that make sure when you make a will how, how you would like things to be splitted and what possible consequences the beneficiaries could face. Yeah. Uh, for example, children not being legal age, selling properties. Um, at the end of the day, is family getting along well between them or yeah. are they going to be difficult uh, on fighting against the state? Why? Because... I deal with sometimes problems that could have been sorted before. For example, um, not having, if you leave everything to nine grandchildren, well, that's great. It's better to probably to make a legacy of money by the executor um, because you need to get the NI numbers, you need to get the power of attorney from them, and it could be very messy. Mm. Um, so it's very important for them to discuss it uh, with their lawyer, I mean, and to see 
like forecast, yeah, what will happen. Yeah, I mean, there's meant to be many a, a TV show and uh, movie based on that sort of thing, the family falling out over a will and mm. uh, trying to chase up their share mm. of it and that sort of mm. thing. But um, it's obvious to say that um, if you are in a position where you do have a lot of assets and things, you best to have one in place, even if you're not yes. particularly yes. old. Yeah. Because it gets, if you leave it to the state, it all gets, it's, you know, it doesn't get passed on how you might want it, mm. obviously. Uh, actually, I think is one of the... Um, most important things people when they want to organize themselves they need to do i always recommend when you buy a property in spain make sure you make a will mm. okay just to avoid problems now you could always improve it change it modify it's, it's not a problem but just make one and um and, and it is very important i should say that most of our clients are very good on on you know they're very uh, conscious of doing wills uh, but I am surprised, Woody, there's still a lot of people with no wills. Right. And and this is something that, uh, for example, in my case with Spaniards, we don't have the freedom of uh, uh, disposal of assets. For example, you British, you can leave everything to whoever you like, whether mm -hmm. you're married, whether you've got children. And that's great in a way because you've got freedom on that in that respect. Spaniards, we, can, we need to leave two-thirds to the children. Yeah. So if I have no will, everything goes to my children and the life interest goes to my wife. I cannot do like you. You leave everything, for example, to your partner or wife. Fine. Spain will not allow that. No. Uh, now, if you don't make a will, if, if you don't make a will, what is going to happen is that if you're resident in Spain, the applicable law is the Spanish. And yeah. That could be very, very delicate for those who are not making wills. Quite. Yeah. Because the consequences that they will have, it will be exactly the same that I, as a Spaniard, will have. And, and they could change that situation easily with making a will. Mm -hmm. um, so I just bring to that um, the attention to that because uh, if anything happens to any of us, uh, it's being controlled by the Spanish law unless you've got specific, for example, British, Americans, those who, who personal law allows them to do these things like uh, free disposal of assets. Yeah. Uh, and it's good and, and it's great mm. in, in a way. It's great. And relatively easily done, I suspect. Uh, you talk to an expert and uh, they'll draw it up for you. Yeah, it's a shame because here you, you don't get the uh, the stories that we get, like uh, an old, old lady left her, all her money to her parrot or a dog or something mm. uh, because they can do that. Well, <laughs> you leave it to a charity or whatever. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people do that, mm. uh, leave it to charity and... Uh, you know, so it's, 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 it's a different world. Every will is a different world. I think last time we spoke, it was obviously two weeks ago. We, you're in every other Wednesday. Um, you just, just enjoyed the long weekend. Oh, there's another one coming up. That's course. right. We have what we call it Puente, which is mm. uh, the long weekend. You yeah, know, it's because that's um, the Brits. For, that's not a holiday. The first of November, not for or, Brits. No. All Saints Day. No, no, right here is always, isn't it? Halloween, uh, uh, bank holiday over there. No, 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 you don't get the day off. Uh, no. All right. Yeah. Okay, well. You, you go into work dressed like uh, a vampire or something. Right. But, uh, no, you still have to. It's not, <laughs> none of that's a holiday. Um, We've got 14 um, holidays in Spain, 14 uh, off days. Yeah. Uh, eight are national, I believe, and the rest are communities and local. Some are very local, aren't they? Yeah, yes. very local. <laughs> and uh, But yes, I, I don't know. Um, mm. Well, it's a big deal. They also, I mean, it's particularly in uh, in Latin America, that 1st of November, it's... Uh, it's very macabre in places, the Day of the Dead. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah, it's quite a thing. But yeah. okay, well, that's coming up, of course, this weekend, and the clock's going back as well. Uh, let's just bring it back to something we always cover because it's it's still applicable, very much so, about residency. And you've done a video um, mm -hmm. because what's happening now is you're having to contest um, residencies that have been denied for that's people right. with TIA applications. Yeah, um, uh, most of the the work, uh, well, of the immigration. Well, the immigration work we're having at the moment, Moody, is 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 two types: the ones from the UK that they are applying for non-lucrative visa and golden visa, or work visa as well, um, projects, etc. Mm. Employees. And the other one is for those who were resident in a way but never legalized their situation those who didn't apply for the TIE before the 31st of December. And um, as, as you could appreciate, in the old days, it was easier. Um, the, the policemen were more flexible, you know, um, and now they're being very, very strict uh, with certain things um, that um, for one reason or the other, you don't. they say you don't comply with the requirements. Mm. 
for example, now uh, they are just objecting if you didn't apply for the health insurance before the 31st of December. And you're getting these policemen and these uh, people so they reject it because they say you did not prove. Um, so you need to appeal that decision and evaluate whether it's worth to resubmitting back again, uh, even having convenio especial or having different strategy or uh, just appealing. The problem, uh, Moody, is appealing um, is dragging on and on. You know, you could, you could, it could even take you one year, a year and yeah. a half, because mm. you need to go through the courts and things like that. So it might be worth it even to relodge it again if you could um, probably uh, find a solution. Uh, the good thing with the TIA, uh, when they come to the office, we could always advise on many possibilities. So there is not always one, you see. You right. have different roads to go. Yeah, try something else. But so, yeah. It's an odd thing because, it's, as you say, it's, it's not like black and white sometimes. No. You know, people send the right stuff in. It's obvious I was here before the end of last year, but it seems like sometimes you get the wrong person in a bad yeah. mood in the office yeah. on the wrong day. And and, it's, and, yeah, and unfortunately, away. unfortunately uh, for example, I had this case that is about uh, a family that by one reason or the other, they didn't do the pattern. And, you know, that was one of the issues that police start raising mm. from the 1st of January this year. They didn't mention anything about the insurance and, and the insurance, even though you did get the insurance afterwards, um, after the 1st of, of January. But now they're objecting, uh, even though uh, we need to interpret the law. You see, it doesn't say in the law that the insurance needs to be um, this date or the other. It, it, in, the law says that you need to prove you were resident, you yeah. know, and you did comply with that requirements. So you, as you said, you could interpret a lot. I still didn't have a court case yet with regards to, to the insurance, not having it in time. But this is one of the unfair or difficult ones that I'm having now, Woody, is, is, is yeah, this one. Yeah, that's the first I've heard of that, I have mm -hmm. to say, because it's, it would seem to be that if you, what they want is that you're able to look after yourself so you can you know, support yourself financially, but also you've got the health cover. So if it's a valid policy, then what's the yeah, problem? Yeah, what was the problem? I get, again, uh, well, I, I really don't know. It's like a patron. Why is the only document allowed to prove you're resident a patron? Why? Mm. Why uh, I cannot prove with a, a rental contract, you see? Yeah. Right? But, but if you go through all the legal process of, of the courts, um, the judge will have to be reasonable and look at the paperwork. And, and you know, I try to get even witness statements uh, at the notary office, say this person has, has lived in, in, in this house for X amount of, of years even to ask the town hall to send the police to double check and make a report whether you did live in that property for mm. X amount of years. So there are more evidence in law. Yeah, but it's but, a nuisance yes. to have to do it, isn't I it? Know, I know, I <laughs> know. And I feel sorry for these people who are struggling with so many obstacles. Mm. Uh, but that's where we are. That's yeah. where we are. I mean... Again, a lot of people say, I wish I would have done it before, you see? Yeah, I mean, it's easy for us to say, because we were saying, you know, this is coming up, you need to get this and this and this in place. But um, every case, people are different. There's different cases and yeah. different situations. So yeah. it's always not always as clear cut as that, is it? No, and, and it's hard to even understand because you mentioned so many times, I did mention with so many webinars or seminars and the British Consulate. So the, it was there saying... Uh, but you see some people started saying, oh, no, I don't believe that, you know, uh, yeah, you know, know that's just to make <laughs> money and things like that. And then now the police just start being strict. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the problem is now everything is a bit more difficult and it costs more money. Mm. And that's the reality. That's the reality. But anyway, here we are. We'll do what, what we could do to do our best. Uh, and, and I feel comfortable because we've got a team that goes from the application to the high courts. So I feel comfortable as long as we could prove and we have enough evidence. And that's what I recommend everyone, is just try to have as many evidence, little invoices mm -hmm. that you've been living here, uh, everything. The only um, suggestion I might say, uh, if by any reason uh, you've got this problem, try Convenio Especial. Why? Because if you're in the system, it's just like a flat fee, you pay. Um, if by any reason you've been rejected and you don't want to appeal, try to connect yourself into that, do a new application, see how it goes, 
And uh, this is the public health system in yes, Spain, yes, paying yes, the yes, equivalent yes. of social security, yes, but you yes. pay that contribution I mean, um, per month. Uh, actually, um, the other option you have, if you've been denied that, is just take it through the courts. Right. You know, is, 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 but I will prefer to give a try with, uh, with the public just in case it will get through. You know, now, whether it's fair or unfair, I agree. It's, 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 it makes no sense, but mm. uh, the, the whole point is to get the TIE sorted. Yes, that's that, that's the point. It seems like they want to see the uh, the pub, you know, the official like the padron, and um, if you know, if you're in the the social security system, the public yeah. one, then that's good enough for them. That's what they, they can do. See, they can see that that's you know that's us. That's, that's what, what they do. Yeah. I mean, when you say you're in the system, they check the records because they could see uh, that you're in social security, and they give you like the OK, hmm. um, and, and then probably they just kind of like you said, you're not in a good mood, or you have <laughs> instructions now that everything needs to be proved before the 31st of December. If uh, And I disagree completely because, as you said, I could be resident, but at the time I was not covered by any private insurance. Um, I know I should have, but I didn't. But now that I want to apply for it, I'm covered. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. so what does it change, really? It doesn't really change being resident or not resident. It changed that I was covered or I wasn't covered. <laughs> and the law really doesn't say that the... Um, that the insurance needs to be of that date, but it really says that you need to be resident uh, and have all the requirements. Yes. So here we go. With Otherwise, it again. you need to start from scratch with a an application. And there is no doctoring, um, Moody. I try to look into uh, doctoring. Obviously, this is just very new now, mm. and uh, just to see similar cases to see whether the judge did make an interpretation or not. I could not find it yet. No precedent. No precedent yet. yet. Right. Oh, okay. So we, I could only inform you as I go. Yeah, well, as I say, that's the first I've heard of that. So uh, that sounds worth pointing out. Mm. Thank you. It's but important. But how, how much do you have to do with the, the driving licence, which over, does that fall under your sort of jurisdiction? Right. Uh, well, because we, it's supposed to, I mean, at the moment, officially it is the end of this month, like yes. this Sunday. That's the end of the period to we um, have swap yours over. In, within the, uh, inside the house, we have a head store that deals with that. And uh, and yes, but uh, I don't have that many, for one reason or the other, that many clients that left it for the very last minute. So I could have just one or two, but uh, but not really. I think people pretty much did, our clients did most of it. And mm. um, because this only applies for those who did apply before the 31st of December. Mm. And of course, we've been saying this for a while uh, about whatever it may be that if you had something in place before the thirty first of December, that's last like ten months ago now. Yeah. Uh, we're saying it as if it's you know yeah. a couple of months into twenty twenty one, but that's nearly a year since. So it, that sort of thing's starting to I think you know what, expire now. What will be well? I always say what it will be sensible, but I said as well that I wouldn't think Brexit will, will happen because we'll come up with a with a deal, and they didn't. You see, mm. now I don't know uh, whether there will be. It has to have. I mean, now you can. Spain has to have different treaties. We have one for dual taxation treaty uh, and the tax. Yeah, that's 1977. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need to have everything that was covered in Europe. Now we need to have bilat bilateral uh, agreements. We need to have one for driver license. Well, I, the last I saw, and we had it in our Spanish news, was that the the embassy in Madrid, British embassy, was appealing to, to the Spanish government to extend that to the end of this year, as far as switching over your driving license without the need to take the test in Spain. Yeah. Because, but at the moment, as I said, not heard anything. So it is officially the thirty first of October. Still haven't heard anything, mm. and um, and and pretty much that's where we are. Yeah, that's where we are. I mean, I know there is. Um, you could you could do your lessons in English. Some some schools driving tests. Yeah. You could do it in English, which is helpful, isn't it? Um, um, I don't know. I think uh, probably the inspectors um, will be reasonable, you mm. know, because you've been driving all your life. Uh, you know. Yeah, you got into all those bad habits. I so know. The, the longer you've been driving, the, the least less chance you have of passing your test sometimes because they want the, the official, the official you know, correct way of doing things. Yeah, you need to drive so slow. Well, and how people really drive, yeah. <laughs> but I've seen it over here. They're, around these parts, uh, they send you over the mountain <laughs> and you're learning. Really? First thing in the morning, it's dark in the morning, yeah. Ooh. Go over to Mongo Ooh. there, yeah. That's, that's a hard one, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, that's in at the deep end. Yeah. Boy. Uh, but, um, okay, well, it, it's, as I say, that's the way things are at the moment with that. But um, anything like that, it's that's what we've been doing. And keep an eye on any developments, and yes. I suppose the same for yourselves. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, um, 
for those who are applying for non-lucrative visa, golden visa, work visa, um, you know, they've got this problem that after they've got the TIE, they will have to do the driving test. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see. We'll see whether we reach agreements. I'm, I'm hopeful, and um, I think we should get it little by little, but probably governments are busy now with the pandemic and things like that, and... Mm. Uh, they didn't do it yet. No. And the thing was, I mean, we've obviously, anyone that was here before the referendum, we were looking at it from a different perspective than Brits living in, in Britain. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, then yeah. Why should they care about us? You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's like a handful of people to them, but it's a big deal to us, yes. actually, living yes. here. It's, it's, uh, it's, and it's something that can be sorted, you see. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something that, as, as you said, if you ask for an extension, or you don't damage, you know, it's not that... that no. That and, bad, you yeah. know, is... Mm -hmm. uh, for those who are coming over now, I know they've got more problems, but that's where we are. That's where we are. But for those who have pre-existing rights and they're being here, it is quite hard. I still find people... The other day I met one that was here in Spain, a lorry driver, 18 years. Right. With no residencia. Ah, uh, okay. So, yeah. so and uh, obviously no driver license now. Hmm. If you don't have um, residencia, you don't. You cannot swap it. Yeah, of course. So, so, and uh, yeah, I mean, they, they may make special, um, special circumstances because he's a lorry driver, and people we need those. At we the need those, and yeah. it, and they're very needed now. Yeah, and everywhere. Spanish people wants to give jobs. I said, oh, I'll have a job any day, hmm. but now he's stuck with that problem. Yeah, and I'm getting on it. So, okay. I'm very well, pleased all the time when, when when I always say my team just tell me when whenever. We've got all this success, you know, is, is because we always deal with problems and problems and problems. I'm, I'm very happy when I hear all these good news. Oh, this client got their, their TIE. I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's a good day, you know. It's, yeah, and there are lots of those. I mean, you're doing, yeah. you are contesting yeah. these successfully. So it's yeah. not, not all, all is not lost. No, um, not at all. Worth, worth speaking to someone like yourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can find out more on the website, which is alicantilawyers.es, the easiest one for English language folk to follow, I guess. And um, this video that you did, whereabouts is it again? It's on it's on the yeah, website. If you're going to alicantalawyers.es or pellicereredia.com, mm -hmm. uh, you say what we do. What we do, there's the yes. menu, yeah, a bit on the menu. What and it's in Im immigration, right? And then you go into immigration and um, and then you'll find here, have you been denied temporary residence under Article 50? Uh-huh. And, and then I, I did a 15 minutes a video explaining uh, all the possible scenarios they, they might find. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it will be very useful for those who are going through this process. Brilliant. But right. as you said, yes, um, thankfully, um, I think even though we deal with court cases that um, by some reason they're not attending to, 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 to what is reasonable, the policeman. Um, I, I'm very happy to say that um, pretty much it's a very, very high percentage of our clients. I would say probably 98% uh, got their TA. Oh, excellent. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a pretty you good know, return, I yeah. mean, one way or the other we manage. But yeah. when we talk about the court, it's for those who are struggling at the moment and, and is getting more and more and more, unfortunately. But, mm. but, yeah. but, but in, if you look at the big picture are not that many because one way or the other you end up sorting them out yeah. you know so that's very good ah, and, good to hear I yeah. say, well all the details of that everything else as well it's, it's worth checking the blog and, and what we do and have, just have a browse around the website you can put it into English Dutch French mm. uh, and Spanish there mm. at uh, alicantilawyers.es we're out of time okay. uh, unbelievably well thanks ever so much for coming in I know it's a, it's a journey for you and you get stuck in traffic and all of that <laughs> but uh, it's, we're lucky to have you as I often say yeah. every couple of weeks so see you if not both of you in two weeks time two weeks Okay. Right. okay, well, thank you very much, Muddy. My pleasure. 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 Well,